This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Sun power. This is the 7 a.m. Barbados Today update for Monday, March 24, 2014. I'm Don Paris. Former Prime Minister Owen Arthur reveals that members of the opposition Barbados Labour Party broke ranks in the crucial vote on the estimates. And he says that's why he was absent for the vote. Arthur made the disclosure last night as he addressed a branch meeting of the party's Christchurch West Central constituency at the Christchurch Foundation School. He said prior to the vote, opposition MPs had decided not to make it appear they were hoping disgruntled Agriculture Minister Dr. David Estwick would vote against the government. But some MPs did not stick to the plan. And I say this not to vote generally, but to tell people expecting the party to vote the party to the concept of collective responsibility is what must hold a parliamentary group and a cabinet together. And if there was a consensus and reach, you cannot then decide that you reckon yourself. And I expect other people to debate the consensus of one day. Can't work. Or else, on Friday, they told the parliament to make the members of the parliament. Because it was important. And we had to make a decision. There will be a period because of the tangible way we need to be involved in this country that I think we have come to the house and go to help us become the government. <laughs> Nothing of the kind And we decided that look, if this is evidence that I think we have come to the house and go to the government, don't let us create the impression once again that we have tried to do something failing by failing to take our vote against the government and have brought down the government. Arthur and a fellow BLP MP George Payne were not in Parliament at the time of the division. The count showed government carrying the vote 15 to 12, indicating that Estwick voted with the Friendel Stewart administration. Meantime, Arthur is urging party members not to be sidetracked by Estwick, who he says is fishing in a dry pond. Instead, he encouraged them to focus on what mattered, the work of the Barbados Labour Party. It was a suggestion that set tongues wagging, but Education Minister Ronald Jones has support in his call for Barbadians to have more babies. The head of the island's largest public sector union says he agrees. General Secretary of the National Union of Public Workers, Dennis Clark, says he believes the proposal has some merit. He noted that countries across Europe were increasing retirement ages and taking other steps because they just don't have enough young people in the working population. And with Barbados heading down a similar path, Joe's suggestion would make sense. And if that is what is behind his call, I support it, yep. right? I've said so over and over. We in, the, we in the Caribbean looking at, because we see the public servants somewhere down the line, they have to contribute to their own pension, and those things are going to increase. The cost, the, the premiums that you pay will increase and increase and increase because you don't have the mass inside there to share the, the, the cost of the insurance. So there's anything wrong in what you say. We need to look at it closely. Clark was speaking yesterday to reporters after a church service at the St. Luke's Anglican Church to mark Public Workers Week. Meantime, on the issue of public sector layoffs, which are due to end this month, Clark says the union still doesn't know the final figures. And he says he's also still unhappy with the way the retrenchment process was undertaken by government. The money government owes to the private sector has put some businesses in a crisis situation. That warning from Senior Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Tracy Shuffler. And she's calling on the Frundell Stewart administration to find a way to settle the debt. 
This as she put forward suggestions to help the struggling Barbados economy. Shuffler has also proposed that Barbados adopt a 24-hour business system to help increase competitiveness, as well as increase the number of duty-free zones across the island to encourage foreign exchange spending. Cultural Ambassador Anthony Gabby Carter is singing the same tune as those who believe government wasted money on last month's celebrations for the 375th anniversary of Parliament. And he says it was also disrespectful to Barbadians. To think about it, we invited a man who could, who potentially can become the king of England to be celebrating with us. We have to spend some kind of money to do that. Think about it in reverse. If we had enslaved anybody from Europe, you think they would invite us up to celebrate with them? The answer is no. So I object to that profusely. I think it was a waste of money and a waste of, of ins and a way of insulting our people. Gabby expressed his feelings at the second University of Independence Square rally over the weekend. In sports now, mixed fortunes for defending champions in cricket yesterday, West Indies made a disappointing start to their defence of the ICC World T20 Championship, losing to India by seven wickets with two balls to spare in Dhaka. But Barbados steam rolled over Trinidad and Tobago in the WICB First Class Championship. Keith Holder reports on Barbados' climb to 46 points from four games in the competition. Opener Evan Lewis top scored with 61 off 68 balls, hitting 9 fours and 3 sixes. All spinner Ashley Nurse took 4 for 64 off 19 overs for a match haul of 6 for 91, and along with a magnificent maiden century of 130 not out, was named player of the match. Veteran left arm spinner Suman Ben picked up 4 for 66 for a match tally of 8 for 97. Keith Holder reporting. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. In regional news now, as the world celebrates tuberculosis day today, there's a warning that a fifth of people infected in the Americas, and that includes the Caribbean, don't know they have the disease. The Pan American Health Organization says the situation is not only endangering the lives of those infected, but it also facilitates further transmission of TB. Producing more disease and generating socio-economic costs for individuals, families and communities. Internationally now, hooded gunmen kill four worshippers and injure many others after storming a church and shooting indiscriminately at a congregation in a church near the Kenyan city of Mombasa. No group has claimed responsibility for the shooting, but officials have blamed Islamist militants from the Al-Shabaab group for similar attacks. And that's where we end the 7 a.m. update. Join us again at noon. Until then, log on to www.barbadistoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper and like us on Facebook to get more news and sports. I'm Don Paris. This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Catch the sun power.